People are always asking if you can clock shot perch. Does the tin man have sheet metal? Battery talk. Talked about these in the last video. These are Canbat lithiums. Uh, I just whipped it out, brought it home, charged it up. It's been on here for a couple weeks and these things are insanely easy to move around. They're super light. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that they're not a sponsor and I'm not going to make any money off them. Um, but if you need lithium batteries, I've already done the research for you. They're probably the only ones that you're gonna get a deal on. So use promo code Bruce5 at canbat.com. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions and I won't bore you with all the uh, home shopping network stuff. So I'll throw it in the air one more time. Uh, gonna do some clock shotting. I know, big surprise. Uh, just gonna use plastics today. Didn't feel like getting minnows. Uh, I came up with my wife the other day when we ran out of bait and cracked them okay on plastic, so. Figured I'd better come out and give it a little bit more of an honest shift without the option for bait. Um, I think we're going to do some catching, hopefully. If not, we're just going to get denied a bunch. I know we'll be uh, tracking some in. I'll try to get a few underwater shots today, just so you get a better idea of how this thing works. There's my clock shot. You can see my weight there clocking. And then there's my little trick shot just above it. The deal with that Z-Man Plastic is it's buoyant, so, like, that's on total slack line right there. And it'll just hover. So I'm hoping to just raise enough hell and get some fish that aren't bass coming in. Just on a little mud, mud rock combo spot. This hole over here is in the mud, and this is just on a little piece of rock. There comes one. Yeah, like I was saying, like you can see on the camera, we're just on a, a rock rock hump to mud transition where there's just some like rubble um, amongst the mud. That seems to be a good place to, to beat up on these perch. Uh, this is an older weight point. There's usually a good mud bug hatch here, I think, and it's just a place we always happen to catch perch. Um, so... Nothing real fancy, just gonna keep calling them in and waiting for uh, school to come swimming close enough that I can get their attention. I might put on the bigger clacker just to make some more noise, get them interested, and then maybe I'll switch out to this little one. I'm starting to feel immediate regret over not having bait. I know better than to come out here without meat in the middle of winter. It's easy in the summer to catch walleyes on plastics, that's rarely a problem, but winter's a different game. You saw those bass down there, like, she's pretty shut down. I'm gonna pull out the heavier meat whistler. Bit bigger of a bait on there too. Just do a little raisin. I kind of want these bass to beat it. I'm sure that's not gonna help the perch come in. Oh, it might. Perch seem to like when the bottom's stirred up, like if you hit it with the camera or something like that. I've seen that work before. So if bass are around swimming, then they're stirring up the bottom a little bit. Maybe it'll help. Bang. Bang. Oh, well, the bass have slowly slinked away. They don't really seem to move too fast in the winter, but they're off the screen. So that's good. Gives the perch a little room to come honking in. Perch still kind of seem to be like a walleye in the sense that they like the low light periods. Uh, I don't think it's as obvious as a walleye, but I think those little mud bugs start hatching a little better in the low light and that kind of gets them fired up. Always seem to catch the nicest ones, um, you know, in the morning and the evening. So and you can catch them all day better than you can walleyes, but there's still something to be said about low light. Just yarding in. That did not take long for him to get fired up. Here we go. Oh, I had a minnow. 
This guy would be in the bucket. Maybe. Well, they're around, but holy. He was not into that. Always when using plastic baits, it's, you gotta do a little more coaxing. Like I said, this is probably the worst week of the year I could have chosen to do this, but not really that entertaining, just fishing in a wheelhouse. Gotta do something to switch it up. Might be a little bit too large marge for them. I'm gonna go a little bit more finessey for now, and if I start getting just little ones or or a bunch more start firing up, I'll switch back to the, the trick shot. This is just a little crappie plastic, just a little two inch minnow. One thing I want this bait to be sitting. When you have a minnow on here, it really doesn't matter if it's sitting perfectly straight, but when it comes to plastic, you're disadvantaged enough that you need to do everything you can to make it as natural as you can get it. There we go. Oh, she just wailed on her too. I'm holding the rod like a little bit of a wimp. Perch are kind of one of those fish where you, it's hard to tell whether to pistol grip it or, or hold it normal. Yeah. I mean, we'll call that a starter fish. It did eat a plastic in the middle of February. And he's just on the thresh, threshold there for uh, Sarah Palin. We'll take him. A little downsized plastic. Hopefully that's the uh, start of things to come. Come on, sailor. Oh, we're under attack from all angles here. Things are looking up now. Shake it on the spot. Don't want to go too wild with the weight. Nice and subtle, but still moving. Things have been so picky. Got you. Yeah, it took a little while, but looks like we have a little school called into us. This is another just... Yeah, another just barely cronzer. Another one for Sarah. Looked like my bait actually was uh, a little bit messed up there. So it could have been after I missed one of those that it wrapped around the drop shot. And um, that could be why a fish wasn't getting it because it was just wrapped around the line. So after getting denied a bunch, I should have just ripped it up, fixed it quick and launched it back down. So that's something to keep in mind. Here's another one. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I don't think that's a perch. Hopefully it's not one of those bass from earlier. <laughs> that ain't no perch. If it is, it's a sumo. You get a plastic, that's cool. I think it's a nice walleye. Uh oh. It's exactly what I didn't want. Uh, it's like a four pound bass. Whoops. I am not a winter bass hunter, so he. I'm not fishing that deep, so he swam away, but I uh, yeah. I mean, from what I've heard and from what I've seen, is that smallmouth just don't really, they're really not that active in the winter. Um, you know, they're still, they'll still eat a little bit, but I think when you fight them like that, it burns up a lot of their energy reserves. Um, at least that's what I've been told. And, you know, couple that with the barotrauma, and uh, it's just not a good recipe. It's a debatable topic. There really hasn't been any studies, uh, you know, to refute or support it that I'm aware of, but 
I mean, there's no way it's helping, you know, crushing them in the winter. It's not going to help the situation at all. So I'll leave them alone. Plus they taste like shit. Oh boy. There we go. There's a nice one. That feels like a nice peacock bass. Northern edition. The old dig and shake, baby, dig and shake. Watch out, Norm. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. We're getting stripier. <laughs> Little competition going there, a few down there. Check the sides on them. It's a nice seven striper, Aaron. There you're back down. Sun's pouring in the window. So that sun, sun setting out there, it was just pouring in the window. A nice beach towel on the truck I slapped up. That's usually Norman's little lay down, but hopefully you can see okay and aren't being too blinded. Every once in a while though, you get one that wants to be saved from a long cold winter. And that's exactly what's going on here. <laughs> Get an army. Another one for Sarah. These are good eaters. Uh, you know, they're probably 11 inches. They can get pretty sassy out here. And, you know, your bucket looks like it's full of uh, northern peacocks. There are a few with that one. They kind of showed themselves once they, once they crushed them. It's funny how fish do that. You know, bass do it all the time. If you, if you look around and there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. And then you catch one and the whole bottom erupts with it. Well, that's kind of what happened there. So that's good. Gives me something to look forward to. There's some fish around. Oh, me, oh, my. Look at him chugging. Oh. Thought he got it. This one's like on a mission to get eaten. Where'd he go? Screaming eagle to nothing. Can't be far. There he is. Chug Norm. Oh, get your head out of the hole, buddy. I'm blaming you for that one. You're lucky he's back. That one had one follow it up. Another one, same, same year class. You know, picking away at the pail. Uh-oh. Little gold on the program. He can go. We're stripe hunting today. Show up, bud. Keep going. Now you might be looking at me like, oh my god, this guy sucks at reeling in. Well, I'm using my rods a little bit too long for the way this shack happens to be laid out. Um, so, whatever it is, what it is. I look like an idiot and lose way more fish than I should. But... The holes could either go here and then there's a beam or way out there in the middle of the shack. You know, I don't want to be using a 6'6 trying to catch yellow perch. So I should get a shorter rod. Like I got a pretty pitiful rod collection for how much I ice fish. I kind of blow the budget on other things usually. Do a lot of backcountry and, you know, hell touring too. So I don't really like humping a super expensive ice fishing rod along with me all the time. I should probably get some though. Turned into a pretty serious shack guy. Oh, 
mountains of fish. I think walleye. Woo, maybe a perch. Ah, that's so. The pajama fish keep on coming. Sarah's getting full. He's a micro. Oof. Better let him walk. Still picking him off here and there. There hasn't been a real crazy like defined bite yet. Just little packs. And the last couple have just been singles, so it's not that encouraging. But I'm waiting for want to come top side so I can do a nice little closer, shut everything down here. Wow. Oh man, I suck. Sometimes when you get into a fish losing rhythm, you know that you lose the first one or two just cause and then you start changing things. And then before you know it, you're just a dumping machine. Got him. One thing I really got used to with the clack shot, because I'm always using a live minnow, is just letting them eat it and, and take it in and then sweeping it. And I always preach that, but... Little soccer. Um, anyway, with uh, with a plastic on there, I'm, I'm freaked out that they're just going to drop it right away because there's not a whole hell of a lot there to motivate them to hold on. Um, so I think I've just been jacking them too soon. Like that one, I let them, you know, still have it and it's still have a nice salty hunk of plastic on there. Like, you know. He still wasn't in a rush to spit it up, so pretty sure that was my problem just with the way they've been eating it. I, uh, I've been setting up too early. Well, the main camera died, so on the old flasher cam here. Hate to close her on a sauger, but I'm doing it. Um, as you can see, plastics work, but as far as live bait goes, use them if you got them, especially in February. You can get away with this or you know, maybe if you're a sportsman or something, but uh, it's too tough of a bite to be toiling with this. Obviously it does work and it's going to get better as the year goes on or you know, maybe if I uh, find some places where they're really snapping, but hopefully you learned something. Uh, honk on the subscribe button, maybe fire me a like, whatever. Uh, take her easy.